In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then he said, let there be light. And the rest of the week, he made everything else, even man, in his own image. Patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. And then God made Eve, so Adam wouldn't be alone anymore. Patty cake, patty cake, patty cake, cake baker's, baker's man. man. But that didn't work out so well when temptation turned into a situation, so God kicked him out of Eden. But that didn't work out so well either, because people were really mean to each other. I'm not touching you! I'm not touching you! See, look, there is no physical contact! So after many generations of that, God decided to drown the heck out of humanity, except for one very special family. I've got a feeling, you know, it's going to be quite an adventure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some adventure it is. <laughs> Once, with civilization, people started conceptualizing things like ownership and independence. Now this is where I draw the line. That didn't work out so well when people's independence started to clash. So what did people do? They warred. Family feuds, tribal wars, wars between empire, cities, states. Before you knew it, everyone declared war on everybody else. It was cool back then. It was the thing to do. Meet Abraham. Abraham was the great-great-great-great-great-grandson of Noah. Unlike other people at the time, Abraham believed in one God, one you cannot see. No, not my cup of tea. And that got him into trouble, especially after God made him a promise. To your descendants, I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river of the Euphrates. Let's have a look. Back then, that was a big gift for a small family. And the problem was that it was occupied by the Canaanites, Cadmonites, Hittites, Perizzites, Amorites, Canaanites, Girgashites. So, as you can imagine, land didn't come easy for any of Abraham's God-loving children. One day, God told Abraham to go to the hills of Moriah to sacrifice his own son, Isaac. But a good angel saved Isaac in the nick of time. Close call. Isaac grew up and had a family. When the famine struck, his son Jacob took the family down to Egypt. Y'all come back now here. We'll be right back. Bye-bye. But that idea didn't turn out so well, because at the end of the day, they became slaves. And after 400 years of that, Moses came along. Hey, you better let my people go, man. It ain't right, dude. God's gonna punish you, you know. So ten plagues later, God freed the Israelites and gave them the Ten Commandments. And finally, they entered the Promised Land. It was a time in history when empires fell like dominoes. With that chaos, strange sea peoples were attacking the Promised Land with iron. My precious. Meet David. Give me one good man and let the best man win. You bastard! So David became the king, and the twelve tribes became one, and the first temple was constructed. But then came wars, and ten tribes went down the drain. Live from Jerusalem, after 18 months of siege, the Babylonians have finally taken over! Yo, man! There's bloodshed on the streets! They're kicking all the Jews out! Hey! They're taking down the temple! Listen, boy, from now on, it's either the Hellenistic way or the highway. <laughs> no comment. I said no comment, please. Thank you. Back to you, John. Thank you. Welcome to the Diaspora. Persecuted and executed, executed and persecuted, the Jews were blamed for just about everything. Heck, some even blamed them for the Black Plague. Oh, it is you! I can smell it! The Jews clearly needed to get back home. I have a dream! Aristotle recommended it, Napoleon tried it, the Brits declared it, even Hitler considered it. Only he had Madagascar in mind. But after sleeping on it, he had a more creative solution. A final one. Finally, the world decided to settle it once and for all. So Israel accepted, but the Arabs didn't. So they attacked Israel, but Israel fought back and won. So they attacked again, and again, and again, and again. So where were we? This is the world. This is the Promised Land. This is Israel.